RF signal low. RF signal critical. Okay, well, how annoying is that? The Tiny Hawk actually has a pretty good receiver. It's got an SPI receiver, but sooner or later you're probably going to get annoyed with all of those warnings coming through. So you might want a receiver with a little bit better range. Now, if you happen to be using the tracer system, I'm going to show you how to upgrade the Tiny Hawk with a tracer receiver like this one here. Okay, and there's actually two methods I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you actually how to do both of the methods. Okay, this is one I've prepared earlier. Okay, there's, uh, there's not a lot to see here. You can just see the, the antenna here mounted. That's the tracer antenna mounted on the forward arms there. And this tiny hawk is the standard one with the standard receiver on it. And I'm going to show you how to upgrade this one. So basically, there's two ways of upgrading. You can use SBUS or TXRX method. Now with the SBUS method, it's, uh, it's quite simple. There's three wires and they just solder directly onto the top of the circuit board. So it's nice and easy. With the TXRX method, you need to take off two of these motors and lay the circuit board over to access and solder two wires onto the bottom of the board. So it's a little bit more involved. So the main difference is with SBUS, on your OSD, you're going to get RSSI. Now with the TXRX method on your OSD, you can, you can have RSSI, but you can also have link quality. Okay, so I'm not going to go into the difference between RSSI and link quality. Uh, you can search for it on YouTube if you want. There's a hundred videos explaining it. If you're a more experienced uh, pilot, you, you might know if you want link quality or RSSI. But if you're just a beginner and you've come here to find out which one of these should I do, um, I think I'd just recommend SBUS method. Okay, the, the reason is this, you, you know, you basically you're putting tracer onto a tiny hook. Now, uh, you're not going to get far enough away to lose link or to lose uh, any of your, your quality of, uh, of connection anyway. So um, for, that, for that reason, it really doesn't matter which method you choose. But anyway, I'm going to show you both of them and how to do it. Okay, so before we get started, I'm just going to make a couple of assumptions. I'm just going to assume that you've already bound your receiver to your transmitter. Okay, now I like to set up my receivers first. Uh, I've got a system here where I've got a 5 volt power source, it's just USB connector. And on the other end here, some wires so I can solder to the, to the receiver. And I can basically just power it up and, and bind it to the transmitter. So anyway, I'll assume that your system is working, you've got your, your receiver bound to your transmitter. Uh, we're also going to assume that you've got uh, TBS agent light on your transmitter. Okay, if you haven't, go to the TBS website and download that and get it set up. And I'm, I try, I'm using this uh, FR Sky X Light, uh, but I'm just going to assume that you've got some sort of transmitter that's got OpenTX on it. Now, unfortunately, if, you, if you're using Spectrum or some other system, you'll just have to follow along as best you can. Uh, so I'm going to show you the method for doing this on OpenTX. Okay, so first thing to do is to take the propellers off and also take all the, uh, all the off the quad and we'll get it ready and then we'll have a look at the first step. Right, so we've taken the top plate off. Uh, the first thing we want to do is actually remove the antenna from the receiver. So if I can just pull it out here and show it to you. Okay, so there it is there. It's soldered on here. Now, to unsolder that, we need to move this uh, capacitor here. And we also, to do that, we need to take the, the antenna wire and move that. So it's a little bit tricky. Okay, I'm just going to go through it here. What I'm going to do, you've got a piece of heat shrink black heat shrink, I'll replace it with white, uh, but the black heat shrink attaches the, uh, the VTX antenna to the cable tie, so you just need to very carefully cut that off, okay, very gently, okay, now once we've done that we can move, we can move the, the VTX antenna out of the way, and having done that we can just move this out of the way, Okay, so that gives us access to the, 
Here it is here. So this is the antenna and this is what we need to unsolder here to get that antenna off. Now of course, you know, you don't need to take it off or to be honest, you can actually just cut it off. But uh, I think we'll just try and do it properly here. If you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to, there's two connections. There's the, the one further up the wire and then the one at the end. Okay, so I'm just going to heat that solder joint up and gently work it off. Okay, and then at the very end, you'll need a fine tip soldering iron to do this. Try not to heat up any other components on the board. Okay, so there's the antenna taken off and after you do that just uh, just do a quick check just on the board there make sure that after you've unsoldered that there's no solder touching any other connectors okay so that's the antenna removed and time to move on to the next part okay so now that we've got this far i think you can see the the three s bus connectors here on the top of the board so seeing we've got them open and and available there we're going to go and have a look at the s bus method first uh, first, we'll have a look at the diagram and see where all the connections go. Alright, so we're going to have a look at the S-Bus method. Uh, but before that, we're just going to have a look at the, the circuit board in general. And we're going to just have a look at all the connections. So these are all the connections on the top of the board. Okay, you can see up the top here, on the top right, we've got the, the signal, ground and positive. Okay, let's just have a look at the bottom of the board. So of course on the on the bottom of the board, here we go here, you basically just got your power connectors and you've got your TX1 and RX1, which of course we're going to use later when we do the next example. Okay, so you might want to just pause the video and take a screenshot of those just uh, for future reference. Okay, so on the receiver, when we're doing SBUS method, what we're actually going to do is we're going to use the, the ground. Okay, here's the ground here. Okay, we're going to use 5 volt here and channel 1. This one here is going to be the S bus. And I'm going to show you how to set that on the receiver a little bit later. Okay, so we'll go back. We'll have a look at an actual diagram and I'll show you how to link this up. Okay, so here we go. Uh, let's get our black pen. Okay, so we'll do negative first. Okay, so negative is actually this one here on the board. And that's actually going to go to the, the ground, which is this one right here. Okay, so we'll just draw a line negative there. Okay, next one positive is the center one here. And on the top right on the receiver, it's that one there. So we're going to have positive going to there. And then we can get a blue wire. Okay, this is going to be your signal right here. Okay, and we're just going to have the signal going to there. Okay, so nice and simple, uh, nothing too hard. Uh, let's see how we're going to do it. All right, so I've got some wires here. I've got the red, black, and blue wires. So this is 30 AWG silicon wire, and it's it's nice and fine. It's uh, it's easy to curl around and actually mount the receiver up the top and the end there. Okay, so let's just jump straight in and start soldering. Okay, so the first thing you need to do is just uh, tin, these, tin these three solder pads here. Okay, I've already done that, but just uh, introduce a little bit of solder. So you just you've got a little ball of solder on there. Okay, now I'm going to solder my wires going back across the board this way, uh, just so you can see. Uh, but you might, you might want to actually solder them coming out this direction here. Okay, so just to make it a little bit clear for the camera, I'm just going to solder them back this way. And try and keep my fingers out of the way as much as possible so you can see what's happening. So that's uh, the negative there, right near the, near the dampener against the negative. The positive goes in the middle. Okay, once again, I'm just trying to do this as quickly as possible. I think you can probably just take your time a bit more. And the signal wire goes right here on the end. Okay, so that's the 
that's the quad done. Now, you might notice I'm using quite long uh, piece of the wire here. Okay, so the reason I do that is so I can actually test the, the whole unit um, without the, the receiver mounted and just confirm that everything's working. And then, of course, when it comes time to mount the receiver in the quad, I actually I cut these wires and shorten them uh, so that they fit a bit neater. But just for testing purposes, we're going to use longer wires. Okay, so we've got the negative is always on the end, near the edge of the board, with TBS. Positive in the middle, and then signal wire, which is the S plus wire, is the third one there. Okay, so there we are, all wired up and ready to move on to the next stage. Alright, with that all done, the next part is to do some settings on the receiver, and we're going to use the transfer and the TBS agent light software to do that. So at the moment, the receiver doesn't actually know that this blue wire here is SBUS. So we need to program the receiver to output SBUS on the blue wire. And we'll do a couple of settings in OpenTX. I'm using the X light here, uh, but all OpenTX is going to work the same. Um, make sure you've got your, your module attached there. So we're just going to power up the quad. Okay, and we're doing that. We're doing that just so the, the receiver can get power. And you'll see the green light should come on the receiver here. And you should have your green light on your module. Okay, if you don't have a green light on both the receiver and the module, stop here and get your binding set up first. All right, let's have a look at the settings on the transmitter. On the transmitter, we're just going to move across to the Lewis scripts. So we're going to go across to the tools menu. Now I'm assuming that you've downloaded TBS Agent Light and you've got it on your transmitter, so I'm just going to open that up. Okay, a couple of settings come up here. We've got the TX and the, the RX. Firstly, we'll just have a quick look at the TX. This is the module that's attached to your transmitter. And just down in the general section, I like to set the power, dynamic power to on. So this way it's not going to you know, be set to a high power. Uh, you know, when you don't need it and use up the battery. Okay, so we'll just check that's on. Go back again into TBS Agent Light. Let's have a look at the receiver. So now, just remember you need your receiver, your, your quad and your receiver powered on, and your green link lights on for this to work. Okay, in the general settings, what we want to do is set the channel mode. If it's set on 8 channel, just make sure that you change it and set it to 12 channel mode. Okay, and that's all we need to really do there. So we'll go back. Okay, next thing is the output map. Now this was the, this is the connectors on the receiver. So remember, the, the third one, which is channel 1, we changed that to SBUS. Okay, so what we're going to do here is select channel 1, and we're just going to go down till we get to S bus. And we're going to choose S bus. So we're basically telling the receiver to output S bus on that blue wire, which we set to S bus. Okay, we'll go back. Next thing we need to do is channel map. This is for the RSSI. And we set it to 12 channel, remember? Okay, we're just waiting for all the channels to load. Here we go. So channel 12. Uh, if you haven't already, uh, just set channel 12 to RSSI. Okay, and we'll just go back. And that's all the settings we need to do on the transmitter. Next part is beta flight. So what we're going to do is we're going to connect up the, the power. So we'll just plug a battery in. We're going to connect up our USB for beta flight. And of course, just make sure you have your transmitter turned on as well. And we're going to do the beta flight settings. Okay, so here we are in beta flight. Just going to connect up. All right, the first thing you want to do once you've connected, okay, you can see we're connected here. Okay, come over to the ports tab, and we're going to turn on UART one. So we're just going to enable the serial RX on UART one. So that's the S plus. After you do that, just remember to save and reboot. 
Okay, connect again. Okay, that's the ports tab all done. We've got our UART1 serial set up. Next, come to configuration. Okay, on the configuration, we're just going to go down the bottom here. One thing we need to check on the right hand side, make sure this is disabled, RSSI signal strength. We're going to set this to serial based receiver. And down here, we're just going to choose SBUS. Okay, it's automatically selected it for me because I had it selected before. Uh, yours will probably be set to something like this, FR Skyport. So just change it to SBUS like this and save and reboot. Okay, connect again. All right, we'll head over to the receivers tab. Okay, now just check that uh, all of your outputs are working. Just move your sticks. Okay, your throttle and your and all of them are working properly. Head over here to RSSI channel. Now remember, we, we output RSSI on channel 12. Okay, but on here it's going to be 12 minus 4 before, because the first four channels are being taken up by the TAER. So we're going to change this to AUX8 for our RSSI channel. And we're going to save that. So this is going to give us RSSI output on the OSD. Now if you come down to OSD, this should already be set up. Uh, but of course down here, you're going to have RSSI value and this is your RSSI value here. Now if you, if you just connected this and you've got it connected beta flight, you're gonna get a warning on your OSD, uh, but that's going to go away after you disconnect from beta flight. Okay, so let's disconnect here and let's have a okay, let's have a look at this. So I'll disconnect from beta flight there. Okay, so let's just plug this in again. I've got a uh, a monitor here. We're just going to have a look at it. Okay, so we'll just plug in and don't connect your your beta flight. Just leave that there and I'll. Give me a little bit of a look at this. Uh, it might be a bit hard to see, but you can see up there on the top right hand side, we've got our RSSI at 99. Okay, so that's the settings in beta flight. All right, so as I said at the beginning, there's another method for wiring this up and that's the TXRX method. So that's what we're going to look at now. I've got my receiver all reset again. And this time we're going to be using four wires and we're going to do the TXRX method. But to do that, we first need to take two of the motors off and lay the board over because we need to access the bottom of the board to solder two of the wires on. Okay, so I'm just going to take everything off the frame and we'll come back and have a look how it looks. All right, so we've taken the screws out of the motors here and we've also taken the screws off the, the all-in-one board. So we're now able to lift the board up like this very gently and just make sure you don't move these wires too much as you're laying the board over. So if we bring the board over here, we can now see what we need to get access to. So this one here, you can see it marked there on the pad. Let's just have a look at that. Okay, so this is your RX1 connector on the pad here. And over here, you've got your TX1 connector. They're the two pads that we need to get to the solder to. And we'll have a look at the diagram first and then we'll get into soldering. So here's a diagram. Basically what we've got is we've got our we've got our front facing this way. Okay, this one up here, this is the, the top, and down the bottom here, this is the bottom of the board. Okay. First thing we're going to look at is the positive and negative. Okay, let's do negative first. So negative, if you look at the receiver, this is the negative. And on the top view, the negative is going to go to this pad here. Right, so basically this wire just goes straight up to here, it's a negative. Okay, just connect that there. Right, the next one we're going to look at is the positive, that's this one here. And it's going to connect to this one here on the top of the board. Okay, so this just goes straight over to here. Now this, uh, this pad next to the positive, that's the S plus, we're not using that one. What we're going to use is TXRX. So let's just... Um, Go back to black again. Okay, so this one 
here and this one here. So this one we're going to make this Tx and this one we're going to make this Rx. So Tx needs to go to Rx. Let's choose uh, what color wires have we got. We've got blue. Okay, so we'll, we'll use blue. Okay, so the Tx is going to go to the Rx. If we look at the bottom view, Rx is this one down here that I'm circling. Okay, so Tx on the receiver is going to down here to the Rx. And then the other wire I've got, let's have a look, it's orange or yellow. So the Rx on the receiver here, this one, is going to go to the Tx on the pad down the bottom, this one here. Okay, so that's just going to go down there. And that's how we connect up our four wires. Okay, first of all, we've got the receiver here. So just to, to sum up, we've got uh, Rx is this one here, Tx, this one here, positive and negative. So we're just going to solder those up. Now, I'm using the same colored wires as uh, the lines I did on the diagram, so it should be easy to follow. Okay, so this one is Rx on the on the receiver. Remember, they swap Rx goes to Tx and Tx goes to Rx on the board. This one is Tx, the blue one is Tx on the receiver. And then we've got the positive. That one there. And the negative, right on the edge here. Okay, so there's our wires all soldered up, and we'll have a look at how they go onto the onto the all-in-one board. Okay, we'll just this over here. Okay, let me just adjust the focus a little bit. Okay, I think that's good. All right, so first of all, we've got our positive and negative wires. Well, actually, no, let's do our TXRX. Okay, so the, the TX was the blue wire, and the TX, of course, is going to go onto this one here. Now, just make sure it's the pad below the, the words TX, not this pad up here, this one right here. I'm just going to tin that one. Just get a little bit of solder. I'm just going to tin the pad and get it ready for soldering. Okay, and then the other pad on the end here, on the side of the board. Okay, that's both of those set up. Okay, so our TX was the blue wire on our receiver. So the TX is going to go to the RX on the board. Now I'm just going to solder from this angle, uh, just so you can see easily. That one's going onto the side there. And the next one on the diagram was the, the orange wire, or the yellow wire, as I've got here. And that's going to go onto the, the TX, right here. Okay, there we go. That's those two, the TX and RX soldered. So next we'll just flip the board over again very carefully so we're not putting any stress on the motor wires. Now we'll just move around here a little bit. I'll just use pieces of blue tack to keep everything in place as I'm doing the soldering. just put the press the board on a little bit there just to, to hold it in place now I'm soldering uh, back across the board here just so you can, you can see so my hands don't get in the way okay so 
the black is actually the round wire is going to go closest to this to this part here that's all right I'll come in from this side okay so we're soldering the negative wire here okay and the positive wire goes right next to it So when you're soldering, just make make very sure you don't get a solder bridge between the two connectors. Well, like I've done here. What I'll need to do is actually suck some of that solder off with the solder sucker. Okay, there we go. Once again, bring the red wire on, the positive wire. Okay. So there we go, on the top of the board we've got the positive and negative connected there and this is the two TXRXYs going to the bottom of the board. Alright, so at this stage we've got our receiver all wired up correctly, we've got the positive and negative here and you can see the other wires going underneath the board there for the TXRX. The next thing we're going to do is look at your transmitter, how to set up the transmitter and then the beta flight. Now of course I'm also assuming that you've already bound this receiver to your transmitter. So you've got it bound and you've got green lights on both the receiver and the transmitter. Uh, if you haven't got up to that stage, make sure it's bound properly first and we'll continue with the transmitter setup. So we're going to set up the transmitter. Uh, with OpenText it's quite easy. So we're just going to go straight across to your tools menu. Now I'm assuming that you've already installed TBS Agent Lite on your transmitter. Uh, if you haven't, just pause the video, go and get that, download it to your SD card and install it. So TBS Agent Lite is just a Lua script. Now we'll start that up. One thing I'm going to do now is connect the battery to the, to the Tiny Hawk. Now you need to connect the battery, of course, to power up the receiver. And once we do that, we can see that we, we can now see the receiver as well. Okay, a couple of settings we're going to look at. Let's have a look at the transmitter first. This is the module attached to your transmitter. So we'll just go down to general. Okay, in this section here, I like to set dynamic power to on. Okay, so this means it's only going to transmit at 25 milliwatts unless it needs to boost the power, uh, which for our purposes is quite adequate. Okay, now the receiver. Okay, if you just have a look at the receiver, uh, we don't need to have the receiver in 12 uh, channel mode, we can just use 8 channel mode, that's fine. Okay, that's all we need to look at there. Okay, we'll go down to output map. Now this is where we need to tell the receiver what to output on those two channels. Remember channel 1 and channel 2, we sold the wires to them. They were the two connectors next to positive and negative. So channel 1 is going to be, we'll just scroll down the screen here. It's going to be TX, so we'll scroll down here till we find TX, Crossfire TX, there we go, and then you see it's automatically set uh, channel 2 to Crossfire RX, so we've got Crossfire TX and RX set there, we'll just go back, now that's saved, okay that was the channel map, we're going to the Apple map side, we're going to go down here to channel map, uh, now with channel map there's nothing you need to do, uh, but I'm just going to jump in here and make sure that you you don't have any of these channels set to RSSI or anything like that. Okay, just make sure they're standard. You know, one is to one, two is to two, etc. Okay, so that's all the settings we need to do on the receiver. So the next part is to have a look at beta flight. Now looking at beta flight, uh, one thing we're going to do, first thing we're going to do is make sure your transmitter is turned on. We're going to connect the USB cable and have beta flight running. So we'll connect that there. And the next thing we want to do, we want to make sure we're getting power to our receiver. So we're going to need to plug the battery in. Okay, of course we should get the green light on the receiver and the transmitter. And we'll just jump over to beta flight and have a look at the settings there. Okay, so here we are in beta flight. Just connect. Okay, so you can see we're all connected here. First thing we do is go to the ports tab. Now this one here, UART1, where it says Serial RX, we just need to toggle that and turn it on. Just this one here. We'll save and reboot. 
Okay, I'll need to go through its process again. Okay, connecting. So that's the port tab there. Go to configuration. We're just going to go down here to where it says receiver. Uh, one thing we might just check is RSI signal strength. This one should be turned off. Okay, make sure it's not turned on. Okay, what we want to do is choose serial based receiver on the top. And on the bottom here, you can just choose CRSF for crossfire. Okay, it's tracer, but we still choose CRSF. Save and reboot. We'll connect once again. Next thing we do, just go down to the receiver tab. Now, on your transmitter, if you move your sticks, you should see all of these bars moving and just check they're, they're moving correctly. Just scroll down. Just make sure you've got your, your roll and your pitch and your, it should all be working properly. Okay, the next thing we need to do is go down to the OSD. Now, because we're doing the TXRX, here it comes. Okay, TXRX, basically, we're, we're not going to use RSSI, so we can come down here, find our RSSI. You can leave it turned on if you want to, but you might as well turn it off. Okay, and then we're going to have a look through here, and we should have link quality up the top here. So I'm just going to turn on link quality and put that up there. Okay, just make sure you have it at a fair distance from the side of the screen, otherwise it's, you're just going to get 19 here and you're not going to see the final number. Okay, so we'll just drag it over a little bit. You, we can adjust, adjust it later. Okay, so that's going to give us our link quality and we'll just save that. Okay, disconnect. Now you don't have to disconnect the tab here. Okay, let's just go back. Right, here we are. So now we've got that all set up. We can have a look at our... Okay, so we've got our screen. I don't have the, the camera connected, so we're not going to see any image. But what we can see... Now, if you can see that, if you'll get focus, up there on the top right, we've got link quality 199. Okay, so now we've got link quality instead of RSSI. And that's how you set that up. All right, so I've actually mounted the board onto the frame again and you can see what I've done is I've actually cut these wires uh, and I've left some of the wires attached to receiver just so I know where where they connect uh, which order they go in okay so here's my bundle of wires coming out the front here so I'm thinking I want to to have the antenna coming out the front so I'm going to mount the receiver in this configuration with the antennas coming out the front here and then this piece of heat shrink is going to slide back over there and we'll just shrink it in there. Okay, for my wires, the way I'm going to route my wires, I'm going to shorten the wires. So they're going to come around here. Okay, I'm going to have them laid across the top of the board and I'm going to solder them. Okay, if you can see that, I'm just going to solder them this way onto the board. Okay, so I'll go ahead and do that and I'll show you the finished product and the receiver is just going to sit at the top here. The receiver is mounted now and we've got the, the heat shrink on it. So here's the wires coming up here and going across the board and being soldered on. Now I've actually put the, the camera mount on here and I just wonder if you can see. Okay, here is the antenna coming out of the receiver and it's just going through the same gap that the motor wires go through, just behind the camera there. Okay, so this receiver is just going to sit up the top here when the top plate goes on. Uh, I'll show you the mounting. Okay, here's one that I've done previously. So if we have a look at this, let me get the best angle on this. There we go, I think you can see that. Okay, so the, the antenna comes out here, the, the hole just behind here, around the, the pole, and just comes out along the arm, and what I've actually got is just a, a tie clip. I've got some rubber here, so the, the rubber goes on top of the arm just to lift the, the poles of the antenna up, and then this sits straight onto that piece of rubber and a tie clip around it. Uh, these tie clips, you need 1.6 millimeter tie clips, uh, we sell them on our website, there's a link down below. So I've got, I've got the tie clip around there, and I don't know if we can see on the bottom, uh, but I've actually put some super glue on the bottom here, 
as well as on the top just to keep everything in place and make sure it doesn't move okay so that's what the eventual setup is going to look like and it's just a case of putting it all together and mounting it okay so we're going to try tracer on the tiny hawk uh, just over that tree line there there's a beach and an ocean so we're going to fly out there as far as we possibly can with a tiny hawk and see how the link quality goes i'll be recording the video on the dji headset with the analog here <laughs> 